if we have a list of numbers. To find their mean, we first of all add them all together. Then once we've done this, we divide it by how many numbers there are. In this list, we have five numbers, so we would divide by five. If we actually work this out, we can add up all of these numbers and you should get 40. So we have 40, divide by five, and 40 divided by five is eight. So the mean of this list of numbers is equal to eight. This video though is about the reverse mean. For reverse mean questions, you'll be told the mean of a set of numbers and need to use this to find out some other missing information. For example, imagine we didn't know that the final number in this list was the number 14. Obviously we do know it's 14, but just pretend for a moment we didn't. Let's replace 14 with a question mark. It's actually possible with all of the information we have here to work out that this number must be 14. Let's have a think about how we found the mean. When we found the mean, we added up all of the numbers and then we divided by five since there were five of them. And this gave us the answer of eight. If we now do this process in reverse, starting with the mean of eight, but rather than dividing by five, we multiply by five, we'll get back to the total of the numbers. So to work out the total, we multiply the mean, which is eight, by how many numbers there were, which is five. And eight times five is 40. This tells us that all of the numbers must add to make 40 if they're going to have a mean of eight. If we add up the four numbers that we do have already, three plus six plus seven plus 10, we end up with 26. So if these four numbers make 26, but there's one number missing, we can work that out by subtracting 26 from the known total, which is 40. So if we do 40 subtract 26, we get 14, which was the missing number. Let's try another example of this. So in this example, we're going to have the numbers 1, 3, 3, 7, 8, 11, and an unknown number at the end. We're told in the question the mean of these numbers is 6, and we need to work out the missing number. So the first thing to do is count up how many numbers there are, and in this one there are 7. This means we can work out the total of all of the numbers by multiplying the mean, which is 6, by how many numbers there are, which is 7. 6 times 7 gives you 42. So all seven of these cards must add up to make 42. We know six of them, so let's add up those cards, the one, three, three, seven, eight, and 11, and this gives you 33. So to find the value of the missing number, we just subtract 33 from the total of 42. So 42 subtract 33 gives you nine. So the number on this missing card must be nine. In these questions, we're using the idea that we can work out the total by multiplying the mean by how many numbers there are, which I've called the frequency. I'll keep this at the top as a reminder as we work through some harder questions. Sometimes exam questions on this topic can be quite wordy. Let's have a look at some examples. So in this question, we've got Leo who is always late to school. Leo's teacher records how many minutes late he is to school for one week. The table shows the results from Monday to Thursday. So here we have the number of minutes that Leo is late on each day from Monday to Thursday. Notice we don't have Friday though. Leo's mean number of minutes late from Monday to Friday was nine. We need to work out how many minutes late Leo was on Friday. So the thing to notice here is the mean number of minutes late from Monday to Friday was nine. So we've been told the mean in this question. If you're ever told the mean, it's probably a reverse mean question. So we're going to try and work out the total number of minutes late by multiplying the mean by the frequency. So the total number of minutes late is the mean number of minutes late, which we're told is nine, multiplied by the frequency, which in this question is how many days there are. The number of days from Monday to Friday is five. So we multiply this by five. Nine times five is 45. So we know that during the entire week, Leo must be 45 minutes late in total. Now we do have the information for Monday to Thursday. So let's add up all of these minutes late and you get a total of 32. So if Leo is 45 minutes late for the entire five days, but 32 minutes late from Monday to Thursday, we can subtract these to work out how many minutes late he is on Friday. So 45 subtract 32 gives you 13. So on Friday, Leo was 13 minutes late to school. Sometimes an exam question will give us several different means to deal with. For example, the mean mass of five bananas is 120 grams. The mean mass of three apples is 90 grams and the mean mass of four oranges is 180 grams. So we have three different means here and we're asked to work out the mean mass of all of the fruit. Now a really common wrong answer to this is people see the word mean and think I just add them up and divide by how many there are. So some people may add up these three numbers here and get a total of 390 
and then just divide this by 3, because there are 3 numbers, and get 130. Unfortunately, this is completely wrong. If a question gives you a mean, or several means, you're probably going to need to do the reverse mean, by multiplying it by the frequency to get a total. Let's do this for each of the fruits separately. We'll start with the 5 bananas, where the mean is 120 grams. So to work out the total mass of all of the bananas, we'll multiply the mean, which is 120, by how many bananas there are, which is 5. 120 times 5 is 600. So this tells you the total mass of all of those bananas is 600 grams. Let's repeat the same process for the apples and the oranges. The mean mass of the three apples is 90 grams. So to work out the total mass, we multiply the mean, which is 90, by how many apples there are, which is 3. So the total mass must be 270. And for the four oranges, the mean is 180. So to work out the total mass, we do the mean, 180, multiplied by the four oranges, gives you a total mass of 720 grams. Now we're ready to work out the mean of all of the fruit. So for all of the fruit we have here, we can work out the total mass by adding together the three masses we've just found. 600 plus 270 plus 720 gives you a total mass of all of the fruit of 1590. All we need to do now is divide this by how many pieces of fruit there are. Well to do this we just add up the 5 bananas, 3 apples and 4 oranges, which gives you a total of 12 pieces of fruit. So to work out the mean then we divide the total mass, 1590, by how many pieces of fruit there are, which is 12. This gives you the answer 132.5 grams, and that's the answer to the question. Let's try another example with a similar style to that last one. So in this question we have students from set 1 and set 2 that complete the same maths test. The mean mark for the 24 students that are in set 1 was 84. The mean mark for the 30 students in set 2 was 66. And we've been asked to work out the mean mark for all of the students in set 1 and set 2. So we'll start with the students from set 1 and we want to work out the total number of marks that they scored. In the question we're told there are 24 students, and their mean score was 84. So to work out the total marks, we multiply the mean, which was 84, by the frequency, which is 24 students. If you do this, you end up with 2016 marks. Now we'll do the same process for set 2. We want the total number of marks, and in the question we're told that there are 30 students, and the mean is 66. So we multiply the mean, 66 marks, by the number of students, which is 30, and this gives you a total of 1,980 marks. Now we can consider all of the students. The total number of marks will be the total for set 1 add the total from set 2, and this gives you an overall total of 3,996 marks. We then need to divide this by how many students there are. There are 24 students in set 1 and 30 in set 2, so in total we've got 54 students. Now to work out the mean, we do the total marks for all of the students, divide by how many students there are. And this gives you the answer of 74 marks. And that's the answer to the question. Next we'll try a question that's slightly different. So a shopkeeper tracked how much money was spent by both adults and children. During one day, 44 adults and 13 children visited the shop. The mean amount spent by adults was £7.80. The mean amount spent by adults and children was £6.37 and we need to work out the mean amount spent by children. This one's slightly different because rather than being told the mean for adults and then the mean for children and being asked to work out a mean for all of them, we've been told the mean for all of them and asked to work out the mean for children. So this is ever so slightly different. Let's begin by looking at the adults. So in the question we're told the adults spent a mean of £7.80. So to work out their total spent, we could do £7.80 and multiply it by how many there are, and there are 44 adults, so multiply this by 44, and we'll find the answer is £343.20. Now we can't do this for children, but we can do it for adults and children combined. So the mean spent by adults and children was £6.37, so to work out the total spent by those, we take the mean, £6.37, and multiply it by how many there are. Now this time we don't do 13 children, we add together the adults and the children. 44 plus 13 is 57, so we're going to multiply this by 57, and this gives you the total spent of £363.09. Next we can consider how much the children spent. To work out the amount they spent in total, we'll do the amount spent by adults and children, and subtract the amount spent by adults. This gives you a total amount spent by children of £19.89. All we need to do now to work out the mean is divide this by how many children there were. In the question we're told there are 13 children, 
So we take this number, £19.89, and divide it by 13, which gives you the answer £1.53. And that's the answer to the question. Now let's try one more question with a similar style to the last one. An officer tracked the speed of 700 vehicles in three lanes on a motorway. 200 vehicles in lane 1 had a mean speed of 54 miles an hour. 237 vehicles in lane 2 had a mean speed of 66 miles per hour. And the mean speed of all 700 vehicles was 63 miles per hour. We need to work out to one decimal place the mean speed of the vehicles in lane 3. Let's start with the vehicles in lane 1. We could work out their total speed by multiplying the mean speed by how many vehicles there were. We're told there are 200 vehicles and the mean is 54. So we do 54 multiplied by 200, which gives you the total of 10,800. Let's do the same thing for lane 2. So in lane 2, to get the total speed, we multiply the mean by the number of vehicles. In the question, you can see there are 237 vehicles and the mean is 66. So we do 66 multiplied by 237, which gives you a total of 15,642. Now we can't do this for lane 3, in fact that's what we're trying to work out in this question. But we are told the mean speed of all 700 vehicles was 63 miles per hour. So we could do this for all vehicles in all of the lanes. So the total speed for all of the vehicles will be the mean for all of them, which is 63, multiplied by how many vehicles there are, which in total is 700. If we work this out, we end up with 44,100. We're now ready to consider lane 3. To work out the total speed for all vehicles in lane 3, we do the total for all lanes and subtract the total from lanes 1 and lanes 2. This gives you 17,658. So this is the total speed of all of the vehicles in that lane. To work out the mean, we need to divide it by how many vehicles there are. Now we're not actually told this in the question, we do need to work this out. We are told that there are 700 vehicles in total, and there are 200 in lane 1 and 237 in lane 2. So to work out the number in lane 3, we can just subtract these two from 700, which gives you 263 vehicles. So to work out the mean speed, we do the total speed, 17,658, divide by how many vehicles there are, 263. And that gives you this number here. The question said to give your answer to one decimal place, so we'd round this off to 67.1 miles per hour. And that's the answer to the question. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions that are in this video's description.